Use this completely stock scheme out of the New Orleans Saints playbook to get big gains and harass your opponent underneath. Coming up next. Hey, this is Full Game Prometheus, the only YouTuber that actually gives you full games of all the tips and schemes I post on my channel. I'll show you the good, the bad, and the ugly. All right, so guys, if you've already new to my channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, that notification icon, because I will actually be showing you full games of me actually using these game schemes online against online ranked opponents, whether it's uh, salary cap, mutt, draft champions, or just regular regs. All right, so guys, this is a requested playbook uh, series from my Patreon and also my subscribers highly requested was the Seattle or I'm sorry the New Orleans Saints playbook this is a, a playbook that is very popular it's used by a lot of the pros it's also been used by a lot of Madden players for years right now and for the most part I've, I've, I've stayed away from this particular uh, playbook but because of the request of my patreon members I want to go ahead and break this now now guys I want to go ahead and stay away from the most popular formations in the game now I will actually go ahead and show you the single back tight slots uh, that I know that's a very uh, meta type of formation in this in this playbook but I'm gonna go ahead and stay away from the pistol punch tight end uh, a lot of players use this particular formation so I'm gonna go ahead and, and avoid that uh, other formations I'm not going to use is going to be the, the gun tight offset tight end uh, and and also gonna stay away from the gun bunch because uh, a lot of the pros a lot of the other players use these type of formations so I want to go ahead and provide you guys with depth to your playbook so let's go ahead and jump into one of the first formations we're going to take a look at it's going to be the I form slight uh, slot flex is going to be our, our, our formations and what we're going to do is we're going to use a couple of plays out of this playbook uh, but we're going to be using majority of the uh, actually stock audibles so this is a good formation to jump into if you have a situation where um, you just you need to get a play uh, a, out there real quick you, you maybe make some adjustments with your roster uh, and you just need to go ahead and just get a play going so we're going to go ahead and show you how to use the stock audibles to move the ball down the field now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the running game. Um, the two plays I'd probably recommend using the most is going to be the halfback toss. So you can get the ball to the outside. And your other audible is going to be the halfback power roll, which is an outside inside run. So let's just take a look at the halfback um, toss against random 43 defenses. The halfback toss, uh, we can go to either side of the formation. A lot of people get a base line, um, and they're going to essentially have a situation where you're going to be able to go ahead and get to the outside right there. So if I would have stayed in, in bounds, I might have been able to pick up some more yards. So this is the type of uh, defense you're probably going to see more, and this is a sink uh, defense. And if I get the ceiling block right here, you can see I'm going to go ahead and get some big runs with this little toss play. Now, uh, obviously, if another defender is off to the right and they leaves the, the backside naked, you can use this toss play to go ahead and get yourself some big yards uh, off to the right side too. Now, I'm not, not going to go into uh, the, the power, uh, but the power is actually another good play. What's good about it is actually, instead of going to the outside, you're going to be going to the inside, and you're going to be able to go ahead and break some pretty good runs. So, uh, the, one of the things I've noticed watching the power is, uh, when you do the power, you want to watch the, the tackle. The tackle is going to tell you where they're going to be going, the inside or the outside. Right there, the tackle actually went to the inside. He actually, he got inside leverage. And let's just see if we can get the same type of look. We can flip the play, inside leverage, and you can see the blocking on the inside right there. So what's cool about the combination of the halfback toss and, and the uh, the power O is run is that you've got outside, uh, you've got runs to the outside, and then you've got a nice little run to the inside with really good blocking. So you can you can definitely open it up with this running game out of the I form slot flex. Now, um, uh, another play, I, I initially was going to go ahead and just take this play out of uh, out of the formation, but uh, I just decided to go ahead and create a sale concept out of it. So what I do is I do the following adjustments. I'm going to go ahead and uh, with uh, the Saints flat, uh, I'm going to go ahead and sail this guy up like this, and I'm going to go ahead and take the streak on the back end side. So we're going to run this against random defenses, but this is going to be the concept they're going to be looking at. So let's take a look at man blitzes and go from there. So with the man blitz, really our hot route is going to be is going to be Thomas on the back end side, and that's why we want to put him on a drag route because it's a fast release. What you can do is with that you can you can pick up some fairly easy yards against hot man blitzes. Once again, same setup. We're going to streak up our, our tight end. And we're going to go ahead and do the drag underneath to give us a hot read. We've also got the backside. Um, 
uh, post route against man blitzes. So that's another way area that you can look at. Uh, so if your opponent is usering over the middle, so if he is usering over the middle, you can just basically you've got the levels concept right there. And a lot of times those running backs are, are the running back, the defenders are supposed to be over the running back is going to be out of position. So let's go ahead and take a look at this against cover two. So against cover two, basically the same type of look, high, low look. And uh, if the flat is open, take it. You want to force your opponent to go ahead and defend the flat. So uh, if the defenders float up, they don't come down, uh, it's not a hard flat, then uh, you want to go ahead and still attack that flat against your opponent. Uh, you've got the crossing route over the backhand side. So uh, once again, that's going to be an area that you want to go to. What's going to happen is that you're going to have uh, basically the uh, mid read is going to take the tight end up the seam. So also you got the uh, the, the backside uh, guy on the backside. So uh, really that that seam route is going to get opened up right there. So that's where you can hit your opponent over the middle too. But most players users uh, online they do use in the middle of the field. Uh, so that, that's not going to be open for you unless the guy actually really goes out of his way to chase the drag. So that's where you want to go and attack the flats against your opponent. Settle for the five yards. That's the most important thing, especially if, if you're not in a long down distance. I definitely would not use this play um, in those type of situations. But uh, you're going to get yourself, yourself some pretty good yards with this uh, simple uh, slant concept. For three, uh, basically you still want to go with the same type of a look and, uh, and feel. Obviously attack the flat. If you can pick up a good 10 yards to your running back, take it. Um, if you force your opponent to go ahead and start defending the flat, you're going to be winning in this game dramatically. So, uh, And if the defender does float it down the flats, you can hit the drag route uh, for some pretty big yards too. So still same read, same progressions with this. That's what's great about this particular play. Even if the guy is, is doing a cover three when he's showing two, uh, that's going to put yourself in a fairly good situation. So you can see this is going to be um, a hybrid look. And right there, the crossing is right over the middle. So look to the flat, look to the crosser, and then and then look um, over the middle. That's going to be the area you want to go to. And sometimes you can get away with these type of routes too uh, if your opponent's really harassing and staying down to the flats. Now cover four, still the same setup. And really what you want to do is look to the flats. The really, the defender's not going to fall out to that area. So you want to go ahead and attack those flats with the running back. You should have a fairly good amount of time to actually go ahead and attack your opponent with cover four. So you can see uh, the cover four, the flat is just wide open. That's going to be the area that you want to go to. Also on the back side, you've got the slant. That should be oh, something they can open up to. And then you have the streak two against cover four. So if you read cover four, your opponent's spamming cover four. Uh, you can look to uh, basically uh, the, 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 uh, the deep route by the tight end. Uh, Fleener didn't come down with it, but you can see uh, how that opens up against cover four. It's just the way the shell works. You do a, a nice little inside pass lead, possession catch it, and you can pick up a nice uh, 15 yards right over the middle against your opponent. So this is going to definitely destroy cover four with these, with these route concepts. And it's going to be very easy checkdowns. Not um, <coughs> long yardage, but it's going to be uh, pretty consistent yardage. So let's go ahead and jump into the next audible um, in this particular play, which is going to be um, the play, which is going to be hitch corner. All right, so the way I like to make one adjustment on this is I like to go ahead and take the hitch route and turn it into whip route. And the reason why, it gives me a fast man beater that I can attack my opponent with and it actually gives me a fairly easy read against the corner. Uh, whether I've got uh, basically coverage is, gonna be, is going to attack that uh, little out route or not. So I like to have basically have a, a quick hitter on the outside. So that's why I do a little whip route like that. And uh, a lot of times you can just deliberately just throw that pass, especially if you've got really good hands and a wide receiver. Um, what's going to happen is you can basically get that particular pass off a lot. Um, and if you get the right angle, sometimes you could take it house. So that's what I do like about this particular, this, this route. So uh, unless he's pressing, for the most part, that little whip route is going to destroy most man reads. And if you get a nice little broken tackle um, off the whip route, um, you can do that. So now we got a press look right here, and this is going to be heavy pressure. 
and this is where you can go ahead and hit them with the corner route right there. So I was able to pick up some fairly good yards with it. You're not going to see an aggressive man defense like that uh, in the game. But you can see right here is that if the guys are out of position, you could definitely get some pretty big yards uh, if he's actually, if you get, if he does do man press like that. You can, you... Now, things get interesting with cover two. And uh, basically what's going to happen is sometimes you're going to have a situation where um, you're going to have to go and check down to different areas. So um, I, I want to show you what my reads are on cover two. I'm still going to be looking to the whip route. And a lot of times what's going to happen is this running back route is going to open up for you. So um, I look to the whip route and then I look for my next progression after that. And sometimes you can actually get this corner out of the backhand side uh, if the corner doesn't come back up but against the whip. So watch the whip. And right here, the corner route is wide open if the defender actually come, comes down with it. So you've got a good quarterback. You're going to be able to go ahead and put those things in there for you. On the backhand side, obviously, you've got uh, the running back route that you can go ahead and hit down. I checked down to that initially. So that's going to be an area that you want to go to against cover two, especially if a guy is actually using a deep blue type of coverage. That running back route won't be uh, will, will be wide open the majority of the time unless he's actually using it or not. Um, but a lot of times they're not going to be using it because a lot of stuff is going to be going off off the left hand side. So just check it down, take the easy yards, force your opponent to go ahead and defend the flats and staying low in coverage, and that's going to open up things over the middle. So this looks like it's a wide nine, cover two. And sometimes you can hit this tight end right over the middle too. So uh, four routes to give you plenty of time to get this get this playoff against cover two. So let's take a look at this cover three. Against cover three, basically you're still going to make the same reads and progressions, and this is where you can really get open up some additional yards with that little whip route. Uh, it just it's it, it gets a little bit more depth than a, a typical out route. So that's what I do like about it. And if a defender doesn't float in the area, you can just whip it uh, up real quick. One thing I probably would not recommend doing is actually running this play on the left side of the hash because it gives you less real estate for the whip to actually be more effective for you. But look at this, I'm picking up seven, eight yards right there. You know, if I make the right read with the whip, uh, it's just going to open things up for me. So just just take it. Take the easy yards. Um, you know, I, I've played against opponents that would use these type of routes, and it would force me to go ahead and make adjustments because it just I, if I didn't stop it, I would cause a lot of problems. Now, this is where uh, basically I wanted to go and show you this in an instant replay on how I made my progressions to the next <laughs> next routes. So um, with this type of coverage, this was just a little bit of a different look. As you can see right here, this guy fell right into that whip route and took it away. So my next progression is to this angle route and I probably could have hit that angle route if I did a little pass lead down and below uh, that would have been wide open but then I just decided to go and check it back to the running back where is an area but as you can see this guy was all over this running back but there was no way behind him so I just did a little uh, an, uh, inside pass lead and he's able to go and pick up a nice good 20 yards for me on that play now against cover four uh, what's gonna happen is that whip route should be still open so uh, really Every single coverage is going to uh, not be in the area against the whip route unless it's a, a cover two. And what you can easily do is just go ahead and rack that and go up the sideline. And you've got another um, wide receiver that's going to go ahead and block for you up the field. So, you know, you could turn the whip route into a nice little 10 yard gainer. Uh, unless he makes any kind of mass adjustments and even if he presses you're still going to be able to go ahead and hit those yards so you can see the blocking right there to go ahead and get a good 15 yards on a little whip route now the final audible we're going to take a look at is going to be the play action divide um, i love this play it's got really good uh, it gets really good separation the problem with it is that you have to make a couple different adjustments if you want to get some fairly good blocking with it with this particular play, we're going to go ahead and block our running back, and then we're going to go ahead and take, again, we're going to put him on a drag route. Now, if you got an opponent that's a lot of man blitzing, I, I would recommend probably staying out of this play because it does take some time to develop, uh, but you can get some monster yards. And some, you know, Obviously, if I would have just racked it a little bit better, I probably would have went house against this guy because he's, he's basically using real aggressive blitz. So I've got the crossing route on the back side. I've got this route underneath uh, against man coverage. So you want to use the high percentage passes um, against your opponent. 
but I really recommend you go ahead and block your running uh, the running back just to give yourself some more time. And you got to be very conscious of uh, of, a, of a buzz play right there. I actually threw right into. Gonna block a running back and drag up our backside receiver, and um, really just going to go ahead and dump it down. Hot read is that drag route. Uh, you can get yourself in some trouble with it. I would stay away from this play if you get an opponent that does a lot of heavy man blitzing. Uh, like I would, I would say this to maybe after the second quarter, after you kind of get a feel for what this guy likes to run on defense, because uh, man blitzes with the way these routes develop a little bit funny um, are not going to be um, very effective with this. So I like to block the running back so I didn't get tied into the play action animation and. You can get this particular route right here against a, uh, a zero blitz that you can blow up an opponent for for a big uh, gainer over the middle. But uh, the risk of it is you take it, you take a sack. All right, so against cover two, basically the same type of look. We're gonna go ahead and drag up, and if nobody goes in the flat, take it. Uh, you can see how the fullback actually goes up um, um, fairly quick after the yardage. So you know. That's something you you want to understand that's going to happen. So uh, go ahead and take the yardage underneath. Force your opponent to go ahead and stop that flat route. Um, <clears throat> he's he's going to he's going to really frustrate it with him if he if he does do, do that. So now the inside crosser is going to get really crazy separation right there. So um, that's going to be another area against a guy that runs a lot of cover two uh, that you can consider. But a lot of the Madden, top Madden players out there will actually put a, f a deep blue over the middle. So that's where you just go ahead and hit it with the, with the, the, the wide receiver two cross right over the middle. All right, so uh, if your opponent's running a lot of cover three, once again, still the, kind of the same thing. But what's going to happen is that deep route on the back uh, by um, Thomas is actually going to get a pretty good separation against cover three. So that's going to be an area that you want to go and look to. So no one fall if if you get anybody that falls to flat, you can go ahead and attack them right out of the middle. So you can see the defenders actually play back really deep. And if you do a low pass lead, you might be able to go ahead and, and stay in front of those guys. So that's something you, you might want to think about too. So right, right here, you can see right here the ball sailed on on on, on my quarterback, but uh, he's just the separation against cover three. Just he gets in these little little areas. That's that's very unique. The, the defenders don't cover that area, so uh, that's what you got to take a look at. But if your opponent's running uh, cover three, he's probably running some blitzes. So you want to go with the high percentage passes, attack the flats, um, and when you get these opportunities to go over the middle, you can go and do that. Uh, with your wide receiver. Now, if you've got an opponent that runs a lot of cover four, still, once again, the same type of reads. Um, you can look to the flat. No one's in the flat. Just go ahead and attack it. Force your opponent to defend it. Um, if you're in a situation where it is a third and long situation, I would probably not recommend using this, but as you can see, that route, it just gets in a certain sweet area of the zone. So I built this entire scheme over this play action divide play just because of that one particular route. Um, this is, it's just such a sweet route that just gets past a lot of different coverages and you can pick up a good 25 yard gainer against a lot of different coverages. So that's what I do love about this particular, this play uh, is that if you sprinkle this into your scheme, it's it's going to go out and you can attack your opponent for some fairly major yards in an area of field he's probably not used to going ahead and getting attacked with. So that's what I do like about it. Now I'm going to show you one other bonus play um, <clears throat> against multiple different, uh, just basically without uh, the breakdown of uh, the different coverages. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at a, another base play I might call out of the huddle. Now another base play I might call, uh, call out of the huddle is going to be a play action shot wheel. And it's just another way to go ahead and attack your opponent. Uh, we're going to run this just against random cover, uh, a random 43 defenses. So I don't know what the computer is actually going to do. And uh, I don't like the, the block and delay route. I like to actually have a fairly consistent route. So I'm going to actually drag up my uh, tight end up instead. And it's just really going to be looking for the tight end and then um, other routes from there. So um, <clears throat> I got rid of that ball a little bit late. It would be good to jump into this, this, this route 
or this particular play on the right side of the hash so you got more time for some of these routes to develop but uh, as you can see right there the ball actually sails a little bit Let's see one more time play action flake and right here uh, against a man cover one that deep crosser is going to be wide open uh, by again on the backhand side. So this is going to be good if you're if you're establishing a run against your opponent. You're going to be able to pick up some fairly good yards with it. Um, <coughs> you've also got the sideline route that you can attack. Uh, you want to look at the high possession route, which is going to be that crossing, dragging, uh, tight end. And that's not going to be a route that he's going to be seeing in this entire scheme. So it's just going to be another look. And you've also got this route right here over the middle with the, uh, with that that route. The the route with Thomas, with the little wheel route, I'm sure you can hit it. Um, I just don't, I don't necessarily attack that route against my opponent. Um, <clears throat> if you have the right read, that's fine. But I'm going to go with the high percentage route. So, so Thomas was wide open in there, but I just I like doing the crossing route, and I like I like having a fairly easy progression. And with the animation of the play action, um, I just I just feel more confident throwing this route underneath. I just feel like I'm going to get more yards with it. So guys, uh, this is basically the I form slot flex out of the uh, New Orleans Saint playbook. I'll be taking a look at a couple other different formations, about five other formations for you guys to take a look at. Uh, once again, to my subscribers, thanks for your support. I really do uh, appreciate your support. Make sure you hit the like button if you are uh, new to my channel. Um, so uh, once again, thank you for your support. Until next time.